Let's talk about battle damage. The first thing I want to show you guys is how I actually damage the helmets, and no, it's not with a buster sword. We're going to be going between different levels of just slight battle damage to heavy weathering and battle damage, and I'm not really going to discuss too much about this Mark 50 damaged helmet, because this helmet was actually printed in already in a damaged state. It's from DO3D. Now, I did embellish a little bit on it and made some extra cuts and dings, but it printed like this, whereas my Mark 85 here, I did all of the damaging, the weathering, all of that on it. So, let's start by looking at just kind of scratching the paint up. Also, I got to ask you to not mind the uh, missing drywall piece here. It was here when we moved in. Haven't fixed it yet. Don't judge. Now, the first thing I always look at is paint. Am I planning on battle damaging and weathering it. The order you actually go and paint something can really lend to the final effect. When you're dealing with high metallic paints like this, uh, battle damaged helmets, you know, you actually have to layer up the paints. This is red paint over gold paint over black paint over primer over plastic. Now, based on that, if you take something like a knife or a razor and I start, you know, scratching the paint away just a little bit, I'm going to start to reveal that gold underneath it. And you can see a little bit of it in some of the uh, the scrapes and scuffs right here. Also, taking files or sandpaper along the edges can really mimic that kind of wear because that's what's going to contact things first. That lends to the metal effect. It makes you think that there's metal underneath it. You can see the gold right here starting to show through. Here is a freshly painted Hellbat helmet I've been working on to make it look a little bit more like my Iron Man suit. Now, I had some paint run in certain areas, but I knew I was going to be battle damaging this, so I wasn't too worried about it. So maybe let's start right here by scratching some of this off. See the gold paint starting to bleed through? Now, how would this be getting damaged? What would be happening to somebody wearing this helmet? His face is always gonna be forward, so everything's gonna be hitting and going backwards. So there might be some damage and nicks in the back, maybe if he fell and scraped his head along, but really all the damage is gonna be in the front, in the front of the ears, on the face, maybe on the jaw if it's getting hit by things. So you really need to think about the application. Alright, so I got most of the light scratches and damage that I wanted, but do I want a really particular form of damage? Do I want to do some really big cut or gash in the helmet? Do I want to blow off part of it? Do I want to melt any of it or am I only going for paint? I think it would be a little bit of a missed opportunity to not try to mimic some of this damage that I do on my uh, Mark 85s on this. So I think I'm going to try to do a really nice slash or gash, just something that looks like he got hit right here over the eye. Let's see how that looks. Not too bad, but I did go a little bit too deep through the paint, so I did start to reveal the red PLA underneath it, but we can fix that later. Probably another really neat way to simulate this effect would maybe to drag it across some gravel, find a rock quarry, start scraping it on the ground. There's a lot of different ways you can do this, but I'm just doing it with kind of a dull knife, and I didn't say it before, but please be careful with this thing, especially if when you're moving really quickly, and maybe wear some glasses. I mean, I've never had anything get in my eye doing this, but hey, you never know. Be safe. Now the next little bit is going to be the more advanced damage and the order of operation I do for that. Now I went and burned all of this damage in and made this dent and made these cuts and ripped all of this away with a combination of a really hot soldering iron, some nippers, a knife, and a heat gun. When we're dealing with something like this little dent up here, all I did was take a lighter, hold it to the back of the, uh, the faceplate, heated it up a little bit, and then just pushed it in with my knuckle. As for the scar, again, just dragging my soldering iron, 
up through the mask and making everything deform and you want to keep it all together. You don't want to try to do damage on the faceplate and then later try to mimic it on the dome. You want to do it all at once if possible. Now I'm going to show you real quick on this kind of busted up faceplate that I uh, used for the intro of the video that, you know, isn't faring too well. Huh. But you can see here just how easy it is to burn and melt the plastic and start making some fake scars. When you have the plastic kind of bubbled and melted up like this, I think that kind of takes away from it. Because if it was metal getting ripped away, there really wouldn't be too many remnants of it. So take a little bit of extra time to just start trimming away that folded plastic and it'll only help you in the long run. Once everything was battle damaged here, I went and sprayed the entire helmet chrome. Once the entire helmet was chrome, I took masking tape and masked off all of these spots. The big chunk in the back, the scar right here, the hole right here, the large scar in the front. I stuffed masking tape all in there to keep the chrome paint. But I didn't do the best job. I left a little bit of the edges almost blown out and bleeding. So as I sprayed the, the red paint, it almost seeped and bled into it kind of giving it a nice melting burning effect that it would have been really hard to simulate if I was trying to do it by hand. So once I applied the red paint and the gold paint, I removed all that masking tape and it left me with this really nice chrome underneath that I didn't have to go and add afterward. Now I could have very easily painted it and then gone and done the scar and then gone and done the battle damage, but I've done that on a helmet before and pulling the soldering iron across that, not only are you now melting plastics, which PLA is relatively safe, but you should still wear a respirator. Now you're melting primers and paints and that's a lot more toxins and fumes that I think I would want to deal with. And it also does does make it bubble up and look a little bit different. I wasn't a big fan of that method. Now that we've gone and damaged the helmets, I want to show you guys how I get that dirty, grimy, weathered look. They do make these little weathering kits you can buy at model stores, but this stuff rubs off pretty easily. It's more for miniatures, and I've never had the best luck with it. What I prefer to use is a cavalcade of just random hand paints. And you can do this with anything. You can do this with any type of paint. You can do it with spray paint. This little bottle of acrylic paint is just a mixture of all of these other paints I have, these grays and these browns and these greens. And I dilute it a little bit with paint thinner to give it like a nice soupy effect. And I throw it in a little tin. See this gross, oily, dirty looking color? It's perfect. So keep your rag handy. Take a little bit of this paint. I use a really gross old brush and I'll start trying to smear it into the cracks and edges and really gloop it in there. And then just try to wipe it away. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna start making it build up in the edges and corners and tarnishing the paint and making it look kind of, well, not good. We don't want this to look good. We want this to look messed up and damaged, right? So I'm gonna go through and kind of apply that method to a couple areas, maybe up, change the paint colors out a little bit and we'll see what we can get half of this looking like. All right, so what do we think about that? Just some scrapes, scuffs, some oil, some dirt. This just looks way too clean for the Mark One, in my opinion. That looks a little bit better. Now I'm gonna go back and use the same technique on the Hellbat helmet we damaged earlier. All right, so that's looking pretty good too. I got this nice and dirty. It still looks reflective and shiny, but I definitely uh, went a little overboard with the dirt, but I'm happy with it. Now, the last thing I want to do is a final little touch of some chrome paints. Because I didn't do what I did on my Mark 85 here and paint the whole thing chrome first, I want to throw just a little bit of silver in some of these scratches, mainly this big one. This is a formula chrome. I'm going to take just a little bit of this and just maybe make a couple little lines in here. Something like that, making it just look like a little bit of a deeper cut or scratch. Might even take the time to hit up just a couple other little spots to give it just a little bit more detail.
that just about does it for this video, guys. I really hope it taught you something new about getting that nice damaged weathered effect. And don't be afraid to embrace those mistakes. That's how I got to this point. If you have any comments, questions, concerns about anything you saw in the video, please drop a comment down below. Maybe let me know some of the methods you've been doing to damage and weather your props. But that's a wrap for this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching and you have a good day. This is a bad idea.